Okay, so let's do, we're going to jump right in. Uh, we do this from 8 to 10 o'clock, so we're going to try to um, uh, really use a lot of this for the conversation. We're going to try to leave some time for Q&A like we normally do. That might be a shorter Q&A period than we've done in the past just based on how the conversation goes. But if you're with Control Camp, you also know that after this, at 10 o'clock Eastern, we start our after party or it's um, for Control Camp members. So if you're not following the camp, Click on Daraja's profile and my profile and just follow the club. And then the after party shows up. And that is an unmoderated space where we just get to know people in the club and we just get to kind of chill and fellowship and uh, get to know one another. So let me first uh, introduce uh, one of the co-moderators that we're really thankful to have, um, Alyssa Leon Smith, who she's been here many times. Steph introduced uh, her to the club and she is come back again and again and just hangs out and shares wisdom. And so um, we're thankful for you being here, Alyssa, uh, as a co-moderator today. And just uh, welcome to the stage. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to chatting with everyone. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. So um, I'm going to let's, let's jump in. Let's let people know who are some of the people on the stage. I'll run through some some brief highlights um, for for us. Uh, we have here, and then I uh, will start a conversation. So let's start. Um, we have Vo Williams on the stage, who is a hip hop artist, specializes in epic hip hop. Uh, you've heard his music on Empire Ballers. Uh, he created the the Lisa Weapon TV series title theme. His music has been on SNL, Atlanta, also in video games, including um, Watch Dogs Two and The Crew Two. Uh, it's a powerful. Um, uh, artists, especially in the space of trailers, a number of supervisors, when we mentioned his name, all raised their hand and said, yep, we've got his music, we've licensed his music, we've licensed his music. We heard that over and over and over. Um, uh, we also have on the stage Wendell Haynes, who is a multi-award winning composer and music supervisor. Uh, served as the music composer and supervisor for the Emmy-nominated Netflix sitcom Family Reunion. He scored the Brianna Taylor documentary for Hulu. He uh, also scored James Cameron's Netflix film, The Game Changers, uh, produced and arranged ESPN's flagship musical themes for Sports Center, NFL Countdown, College Game Day, and NBA, and uh, has been involved in the Sonic branding for major brands like McDonald's, Pepsi, ABC, and HBO. So that's um, very honored to have Wendell on stage. Um, I want to introduce Matt Head. Matt Head is an award, Emmy Award winning composer, uh, composer for P Valley, uh, Carl Weber's The Family Business, uh, PBS documentary The Black Church, This Is Our Story, which uh, um, is airing now, Matt. Am I saying that correctly? Um, yeah, yeah. It's airing at 9 o'clock. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt, real quick. I, I scored. I scored. I scored ten minutes of a demo of that for for Barry Cole, and and I, I'm honored that you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Very good people, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm honored that you got it. Barry was like, "Yo, great job, Wendell," and then you know everything went the way it needed to go. That was destiny for you, man. Thank you. I, I appreciate what you did. I appreciate you, brother. That is awesome, um, Matt. Also uh, produced for BET's Boomerang series and uh, was the producer for two seasons of uh, Greenleaf, which is where he and I worked together and met. And um, yeah, honored to have Matt Head on the stage. Uh, um, Alyssa, do you want to introduce uh, Jizzle and Shalaya or shall I go through it? Yeah, no problem. So on Jizzle's side, welcome Jizzle, um, she is a Grammy-nominated Zen thug, artist, writer, and entrepreneur. Um, she's written for and works alongside top artists and producers such as Ty Dolla Sign, Snoop Dogg, Diddy, Timbaland, Pharrell, Nicki Minaj, the list just goes on. Her single, Get Loud For Me, which has become an anthem for sports teams all over, including the LA Lakers, has over 30 million streams on Spotify and has been heavily licensed by tons of TV shows, films, and video games, including Fortnite, has written for and placed music with brands like Facebook, Zumba, NFL, Bose, NBA, Adidas, Beats, and more, 
and her music is regularly used in film and TV shows like Blackish and Grownish, Madam Secretary, So You Think You Can Dance, The Fast and the Furious, All American, and countless others. So thank you, Jizzle, for being here. And next up, I have the pleasure of introducing Shalea, who I also have the pleasure of working directly with as she is on our Quincy Jones Productions roster. Um, she was mentored by Stevie Wonder, toured with him for many years. Um, she's also Quincy's protege. Um, but, you know, more than that on her own, she is a fabulous singer, songwriter, pianist, everything. She played Dorenda Clark Cole in the 2020 Lifetime biopic, The Clark Sisters, First Ladies of Gospel, which was just nominated for the NAACP Image Award and Critics of Choice Award. Um, she's performed for the Obamas at the White House twice, performed the theme song to the sitcom All of Us, wrote and produced the movie theme Love Fell on Me for the film Jumping the Broom, wrote and produced Can't Play It Cool for Black Lightning on CW, and most recently just released a beautiful song called Grace that is actually co-written with Steph on this very stage. So I'm excited for them to talk about that a little bit more later, but um, that is Shalaya. Welcome, Shalaya. Thank you. And last but definitely definitely not least, we have uh, Anthony Clint Jr., better known as just Clint, uh, who is a music producer, uh, voting member of the Recording Academy, he's produced for Grammy-nominated artists, uh, uh, TLC, Tamar Braxton, Case, um, on, the, on the TV side, placements in, in many, many shows, including Napoli Ever, Ever After, ATL, Homicide, Black Ink Chicago, Grand Hustle, Desert Flippers, NFL Today, NCAA March Madness. And I kept, I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, uh, getting getting uh, names off of the website, and there was just so many pages. So welcome, Clint. Well, it's an honor to have you on the stage with us. You've been here before. You're, you're already control camp, but uh, we, we're grateful to have you in the number today thank you for having me uh yeah love the control camp fam most definitely i appreciate you guys so this is just um special everyone here um it, it's it is an honor i want to jump into this if you're in the audience you see how epic this is going to be take a minute and if you haven't already pinged someone to tell them about the room take the time while we're while we're jumping into our conversation to let someone know that this awesome conversation is going on. And so um, I'm going to jump right in. Like I said, I'm, we're going to pose some questions, but if uh, some questions will be posed to particular people, but feel free to jump in. We want this to be more of a convo than, um, than an interview. And so if you've got something to add or uh, some other follow-up, I want everyone to feel free just unmute yourself and just kind of jump in. Um, but for a lot of us here, um, who are all musicians or artists, many of us really grew up just knowing one side of the industry. I personally, I was, as a songwriter, I just knew I wanted to write for a big artist. So the commercial side was all I was aware of, and that's the story for a lot of people. And at some point, we learned kind of about sync and learned that this, there was this option out here. So which I want some of you to just talk about what that moment was for you. When was the moment when you realized that sync licensing, writing for TV, writing for film was not just a one-off thing, but it was actually like a career path. When anybody want to jump in and say what that moment was for them? Uh, I'll go real quick because um, yeah, I, I started uh Oh, well, hey, I'll just, hey, everyone first. My name's Chisel. <laughs> before I get ahead of myself. But um, like you said, Eric, when I first started um, in the industry, I started just rapping and then uh, finding out about songwriting. Like, so my career path was like finding out all these different facets as I moved along thinking like my there was only this one path I wanted to do music and to create. But I, I did always think of myself as a writer first. But um my first introduction to like TV and film and sync at this time, I, I'm, I decided to choose songwriting writing as my path. I'm in college and then I got the opportunity to uh, do these vocals for a McDonald's ad. And I don't, it, this was a while ago. I don't know if you guys remember the, the McDonald's dollar, dollar millionaire uh, campaign, but uh 
I, I literally did that. I went in there and freestyled this thing for like 30 seconds. And McDonald's sent me a check all year that year. And I was like, I, and they paid me for the session too. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, I made a couple thousand dollars. I just went in there for a few hours. Boom. That was cool. That was easy. But I, I literally got a check and not even a check checks for the entire year uh, off that one ad. And so that, that was my introduction. And then I forgot about it. I just started writing songs for all these people. I forgot about it. And then I got back into it um, a few years ago. But that's when I was like, okay, there's a whole nother world to this that pays much faster too, by the way. That is awesome. Uh, that's an awesome story. Like for a freestyle to turn into, into a whole year's and, worth of checks. And can I add to that real quick? Yeah, go ahead, Wendell. Since Jiz yeah, since Jizzle mentioned McDonald's, so I've scored, I've probably scored about 30 or 40 more um, McDonald's commercials. And one commercial, one piece of music that I did for McDonald's turned into another 30-some 30 30 some, 30 some, um, commercials. I did maybe in, in around 2015, I did... Uh, I wrote the Let Me Get a Mick Pick 2 campaign. Let me get a Mick Pick 2. You know what to do. That whole thing. And they turned that and that turn, that was one spot that, be, that started out in the in the what they call the urban, the urban um, uh, campaign, and it turned into the general market. You know, in commercials, they have the urban side and they have the general market. The urban side plays mainly on stations that um, black people watch. So like the ETs and TV ones. Um, and different cable stations here and there. But the general market means it plays on NBC, ABC, CBS, or wherever across the board, even even um, BET as well, just across the board stuff. And so that particular spot went from a radio commercial to a TV commercial that played on the urban stations, but then went to a general market. And so that it was able to cover all these different territories. And that was a I mean, that's, that was in 2015. I've been working on doing commercials since, you know, probably like 97, 96, 97. So that wasn't like a bright light bulb for me at that point. But it's just to say that, yes, um, the way I got into this whole commercial side or TV film side was because I started out making remixes for Sony Records. And I realized that it they weren't, not only was not paying that much money, I wasn't, they weren't paying me uh, in a timely manner. And what I had to do to get the actual remix, you know, by staying in the studio, um, you know, for hours and hours and hours, you know, inhaling all sorts of smoke and all, I, just, I wasn't into all that. And it was just a weird thing for me back in the day. So that, that, that propelled me to decide that I wanted to uh, find some new avenues. And so since about 1996 or 97, I've been doing commercials, making original music for commercials, licensing music for commercials, and doing TV shows and movies. That's amazing. Um, and to have such a long track record and to see that switch. I want to I, I jump a little more. I'm going to hold off on this question because I do want to, you said something and Jesus said something about just kind of just bouncing back and forth from the was transitioning from commercial to sync. But before that, um, Matt, I want to hear some of yours because I, I know you, I know your story too. So I know you've had, you had a moment where you were like, Oh, sync licensing is it. Do you want to share that? Yeah, man. Um, so I came in the industry a little bit different. I had, a. I was making beats for a lot of people. So I was working on, um, making tracks and then, I was had a small pub deal with Universal uh, in my early twenties, and you know it was cool. And my biggest thing was I wanted to be a part of something bigger than me. You know, making songs were cool, and being a part of that pub deal was cool. But it was always one offs. It was, I was never at the time. I'm 22, 23, so I wasn't in the room with the artists too much. If I was, it was too many people around. Like I, I like to be a part of projects and and build from very beginning to end. And so, you know, uh, film scoring and, you know, writing music for film and television came by accident for me. You know, I had a whole bunch of music on a CD and I got a hold of a production company, a film production company here in Atlanta. 
And what they did was they put all the music on that on that CD and put it in their movie. Um, so with that being said, they called me back, hey, can you, you know, manipulate this and make this fit our scenes? We love the style, we love the tone, we love the, the themes that are going on. Is there any way you can kind of put it all together? And I was like, yeah. And they had no money, no, no anything. And literally that I sat there and did the film, but I fell in love with the process and the teamwork of, of, of writing music for film and television. Um, and I scored that film and it, it won an award. And from then on, it just kind of, you know, snowballed into other opportunities. I did some jingles um, and then I ended up working for the AJC, doing a lot of work for the paper as far as their documentaries. Um, which led to me meeting, you know, other people in the industry that allowed me to work on a lot of different BET and TV One movies. That was kind of like my, you know, starting off point. And then that, I led into, you know, the Green Leafs and the Step Ups and all that kind of stuff. So it was just one of those things where I didn't look at it on the money wise, money side of it. I looked at it more for just being a part of something bigger um, and wanting to make music that kind of reached the masses a little bit more instead of just making tracks and, you know, cause everybody's a producer, everybody has the same, you know, you know, access that we all have. I just felt like I'll just go down this world road because I don't see a lot of black folks doing what I'm doing. So let's just do it this way and see what happens. And like I said, I fell in love with the process of, of scoring films and, and just watching the film from beginning to end and developing that stuff. That is great. Very insightful. Um, and let me toss this to you too, Vo, because your style is just so perfectly suited for trailers, TVs, big TV moments. Was that your intention starting out? Is that the artist that you were, or did or did you come across Sync and then was like, oh, this is a formula for Sync? How, tell, tell me how this these came together. Uh, first off, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate this. Uh opportunity to meet everybody and to, and to um, speak to so many uh, great artists out there uh, about this space. Um, and just to be included in general is, is a huge honor. So thank you so much for having me here. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's an interesting question because it's, it's um, and I'll try to keep it as short as possible. For me, um, I very much so have been evolving into the space and gaining sensibilities for, um, for what the needs of my clients are over time. Um, and those sensibilities have become ingrained in me uh, as second nature more so than anything. But the desire um, and the aesthetic to create uh, epic music, music with scale and size has always been um, in my DNA. That's always been what I've been interested in. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, and I saw George Michael in the in the black leather in the faith video, and I was like, "Yo, that cat, like just just that that kind of power that dude was exuding in that vibe." And even now, you can see I wear like a black leather. I actually didn't even think about that. But I've always been <laughs> a, a, I've always been attracted to that, and 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 you know, watching Michael Jackson just like hop out of the out of a hole in the stage and just stand there for five minutes while people went crazy, like that. That's always been what I've wanted to create. And, I, and you know, growing up writing music, writing hip hop, I came up a battle rapper and, um, and I was, you know, writing music to be more of a uh, commercial artist and, and very much so going up that trajectory. Um, but I, at, at some point in my career, I realized, you know, I want to make music that reaches people um, in stadiums. Like I want the person in the nosebleed to be able to feel what I'm saying, like the person in the front row, and perhaps like this, this very, this very, uh, this my approach currently wouldn't wouldn't fill that kind of space. So how can I fill this kind of space? How can I how can I make hip hop as big and as epic as a Michael Jackson song or, or Guns N' Roses or Metallica? How can I fill that space? So that became very much so a part of my authentic voice, um, which led to me creating my first. Um, the first track that that I've ever done in the space, which happened completely by accident. I had no idea what we were doing. I just happened to be that artist doing that. And I had no idea what my partner had in mind for it, um, but he was already working in sync and already um, pretty much rooted in the space. And, um, you know, just me saying yes to an opportunity 
um, and trying to build relationships ended up, you know, landing me my first sink. So um, that was 10 years ago. Um, and since then, uh, basically, it's just been an evolution and a growth process of me just baking in what what my passions are, baking in my true passion for 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 visual music. Um, you know, I'm also a visual artist as well. I'm not going to go down a tangent, but I'm also a visual artist. So I see, like, I'm, I'm sure a lot of artists, you know, we go in the bathroom and we sing in the mirror. We imagine our, what our stage, what our show is going to look like when we get that arena tour. You know what I mean? Like, I can, I close my eyes and I dream it and I see it. And when I, when I sing the music, when I'm writing the music, I imagine how that translates in that kind of space. So, um, so yeah, it just, it just, it's just been a, it's just been a growth process and, and kind of baking in um, what's uh, more experience and, and stuff like that into, and that's what led me to the sound that I have right now. That's awesome. What an evolution. That is just really cool. Thank you for like ex explaining that. And so you also touched on something. And so let's get into this um, talking because a lot of our listeners and a lot of our control camp members, they're um, also had aspirations or currently have aspirations in the commercial side of the music industry. Some have had aspirations and are are diso got disillusioned. And so see, they see sync licensing as as a um, an alternative or maybe a more direct route or, you know, something that has uh, more opportunity finance wise for, for, for all, some of you on the panel, you have people like Jizzle. I know you've you've lived in both worlds, and you might you probably still live in both worlds. Shalea is not just a sync artist, but an, an artist artist who's uh, just releasing her own music. And so, talk to me just just from your perspective, if you were to advise people, you know, in terms of where this industry is, where sync is, is is do you see sync as a place to be? all in at is more hopeful than the regular industry is it like stocks where you need to diversify and being a little of both what's what's your what's the take on the on the stage in terms of commercial industry versus sync industry and how it fits into our overall realm of music creation um i think we're definitely like um in a place where you can live in all worlds simultaneously. And if you can line up your approach and uh, in, in each world, then it helps overall because at, at the end of it, I, I think you have to think about your career or your trajectory a, as one whole thing and these things contributing to the sum of it. Right. So um, if, if I'm, if I'm writing songs for people and also putting out a song myself and also having these big sinks i mean ultimately all those things help to grow the brand of jizzle and contribute you know to the bottom line so if you have a single that's coming out and then you can you can get some sinks on that same song or have that song playing in, in some stadiums uh you know while the lakers play or the magic player or something like that but uh it's just the exposure so i think that's the the benefit to existing in all those worlds at the same time i definitely don't feel I, I don't feel like uh there's one clear path or people should view i think sometimes maybe people view the sync world is like uh i don't know i don't want to say graveyard but that's kind of deep but you know what i'm saying <laughs> but they kind of <laughs> but like but they feel like it's at the end or maybe like not as serious um you know i feel like uh diving more into the sync side of things has helped improve my um, songwriting and my performance as an artist and giving me a more global approach to, to how I, I do everything. So, uh, yeah. I, I say, well, if I can, I got a follow-up question and this can um, be directed towards Shalea <laughs> and Jizzle. Um, you know, in the more commercial artist space, how do you, how do you find that balance? Like, you know, do you find the majority of, you know, your work of commissions kind of being, or, or even your, your attention kind of more heavily focused on, you know, pushing your artists, you know, front end commercial brand more, or um, is it, you know, like is more of the weight of your music, you know, creation kind of on the sync side? Like how, how does that balance happen? Like where, you know, where is the music creation happening and what's the, I guess, if there is an end goal, like is one, you know, preferred over the other? Uh, for me, I feel like um, 
it's it's two different animals, but but it's always the same thing. I feel like when you go into anything, like like you have to have an intention. So if the intention is okay, I'm doing this for this specific brief, this specific show, this specific <laughs> sync, then fine. But if I go in thinking I'm gonna make the best song I can make possible. And it will also sync well, and my, you know, and my core audience will like it. And I, I think when you do that, that's like when you when you marry the, the, those, um, that's when you find the most success. Well, at least for me, I have um, when I did get loud for me, which is my most synced song ever. It's been syncing regularly for you know the past three years, literally, you know, monthly. You know, so uh, and it was just going in to make the best song possible which happened to sync extremely well you know what i'm saying and, and still check all the boxes and so now for, for just me personally that's my approach unless it, it is a specific brief of course we all get those things where it's like oh, okay bet i could knock that out real quick that's nothing you know so there'll always be that but i think always um as a as an artist as a creative it's to make the make the best thing possible in in every arena Absolutely. I, I 100% agree everything with everything that was said. I mean, I, I think it is that magic moment where all the stars kind of align and it just so happens that your song as an artist that represents you as an artist is what is wanted. And so for, for the moments that I had with, with Jumping the Broom when they used my song as a score throughout the film, that happened to be, you know, the title track to my album, which I kind of decided to to name it Love Fell On Me because of the huge success of Jumping the Broom. And then with um, with Black Lightning, same thing. That was a record from my album, uh, Can't Play It Cool. So, uh, but, but as was already said, you know, you just kind of go into it saying, I just want to write something, create something that reflects me. If it happens to be me as an artist, there's, I know for me personally, there's so many sides I have um, not always able to be shown um, as an artist, but there's so many other musical sides. And so I definitely jump at those opportunities to do something outside of what I would release as an artist. And then if I can just jump in on that, because th th both, both of you guys say great things about this. So if I can just capitalize on what you're saying is, in general, people like authenticity, right? So Jizzle, she's an artist, you know, Everybody, the, I, I don't know who the, the second person who just spoke was, but is I'm assuming she's an artist too. People love real, which is called real artists, right? Um, real artists do music. That means that they do, if they do music in the commercial space or the TV space or the film space, their people are getting something that's authentic, which means they're just, they're doing what they do, right? And it's not an advertiser or a producer telling them what to do. Right. Uh, the same way as if they just licensed a Jay-Z song, then no, no one's going to tell Jay-Z, hey, we need you to go back into uh, one of your hit songs and change the lyrics so it fits. It's more consumer friendly. No, they're not going to do that. So Jizzle's coming with some authenticity. And, and, and I like what she's saying about the idea that she can float in all the worlds without picking one, because each world makes her stature bigger in the other world, right? If she's an artist working with Puff or Timbaland or whoever, and she comes to this other world of TV or commercials or whatever, she appears bigger in that world. If she's coming from the other side of the fence, right? And she's got a big song on a national TV show or national commercial, the people in the record industry realize that and that's momentum for her as well. And I want to say for all the people who might not even be artists, not everybody's an artist, right? I'm not an artist. I'm a composer and I'm a music producer. I can make, I can produce every type of music out there. Um, and so people come to me for everything across the board. And I say that in a way not to say, oh, I can do this. It's, it's because when you do different things, then people can come to you for each of those things. So people who make music, I want to say this, I'm the music composer on the Netflix series uh, Family Reunion. But on Family Reunion, I've written over 50 songs, right? And when I say I've written over 50 songs, I didn't call up Jizzle or whoever. Not that I wouldn't call her up, but I don't know Jizzle. I'm just meeting her tonight. And everybody else who's super talented on this panel, I'm just meeting everybody tonight but I wrote over 50 songs. And when you can actually 
when you can create music as a composer, as a producer, and as a writer, then people hire you because you can do all three. It, it costs them more money to hire one person for this and then another person for that and another person for that. So I just wanted to put that out there for anybody listening who's, who makes music and writes songs but doesn't actually sing or rap. You can get into a mode where you can create the songs and then you can call in the jizzles and everybody else who's a great artist you know, that you know and they can be the voice and sing or rap or whatever, either the music, that, either the lyrics that you write to your music, or maybe you give the license to the artist to come in and write for you too. But in the end, teamwork is what propels you in your career. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. I'm gonna do a, a real quick room reset, um, but he, you made some really great points. I always kind of felt as well, and, and Jizzle and Chalet, great like information. I think that was really, really helpful context for because we we just you know cater to um, independent artists, you know, and we get, kind of get the spectrum of you know composers, those who are kind of familiar with the more traditional artist route, um, but also you know either sync is something that they you know lightly been involved with um, or are curious about getting involved with. So I think that context is really, really helpful. Um, and I've always felt too, you know, to, to Wendell's point that um, those those writers who are producers, composers, you know, who um, create, you know, their instrumentation, um, you know, the music bed underneath uh, the lyrics have a, a, an advantage. And this is kind of my, you know, personal uh, um, perspective on it because, you know, we you can you can sync and license, you know, just an instrumental straight out. Um, it's a little tougher to just, you know, uh, license a, a, you know, a lyric, you know what I mean? So I've always felt like sync is very, very favorite towards producers, but, uh, but again, teamwork definitely does lift up, um, you know, the, the song in and of itself and a, and a lyric can definitely accentuate and, and take, um, take a song to the next level. But real quick, for those who are just joining us, uh, welcome to uh, Control Camp. We are a community built for independent artists uh, who are wanting to get their music into TV and film. I'm one of your hosts, Daraj. I'm an indie hip, art, hip hop artist based out of Orlando, Florida. Alongside me is my co-host, songwriter, composer, Eric Campbell. Uh, we've had numerous placements with uh, ads, trailers, promos, and TV with brands and networks. And uh, this is a room that we hold every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, today's session is, is really, really special. Uh, we have uh, some of the top black creators making uh, music and composing for TV and film. And so we have a, a great discussion going on. And if you're just joining us, don't worry because we do record our rooms. We make those available on our uh, Patreon. So if you uh, visit one of our profiles, either Eric um, or uh, myself, you'll see our website controlcamp.com. Uh, and if you go to our Sync 101 page, it'll lead you to where uh, our replays are on Patreon. And so we we give a lot of great information. We have a lot of, um, you know, talented and industry gatekeepers, composers, uh, you name it, who speak towards, you know, the what it takes to succeed in this in this space. Um, and so if you visit our Patreon, we have all of our past rooms as well and, and discussions that we've had. Uh, but without further ado, I want to continue this conversation. So, um, Eric, where are we going next, man? All right. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to pass the baton to um, Alyssa. Uh, you want to uh, take take on some questions? All right. Sounds good. Hi, everybody. My name is Alyssa Leon. And just so you know who I am, I'm the VP of Business at Quincy Jones Productions. So my first question is actually for Anthony Clint. And just so I can be clear, do you go by Clint or Anthony? I go by both. It's it's funny, but okay. just just call me Clint. It's one syllable. It's easier to say, so we just rock with Clint. All right, let's go with that. Hi, Clint. Nice to meet you. Hi, um, so, from your background, you say that you had about a hundred plus TV placements in 2020, and without giving away too many of your secrets, can you tell us how you did that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean. Uh, I've, I fell in love with the, the sync side of things, uh, I want to say around 2013 when I landed um, my first TV placement 
on NFL Network. Um, that same track, uh, a few months later, got used on on Fox Sports, and um, I made. I want to say from that from that first placement, made about six hundred dollars in royalty. So that was kind of like the light bulb for me. Um, I was just like, yo, if this one track can make. You know, it wasn't a super huge amount, but it was like just one track and it was like 20 seconds or whatever. So at that point, I was just like, yo, like I want to I want to see what I could turn this into and, you know, just just really double down on what worked, do more tracks of, um, I guess, along the lines of, of what worked. Um, I'm always uh, the type to to study and go back and see what worked and then replicate that. Um, and, and that's how I eventually built up to a hundred every time I would get a placement. Okay. What elements of, you know, these tracks that are getting placed, what do they all have in common? You know, are, are the intros long? Are they short? Um, what kind of sections, what kind of buildups did I have? How did I end the song or the track? Um, so I just paid attention to, to what was working and, um, you know, just tried to do more of that, um, a combination of that collaboration, collaboration, like Wendell said, um, collaborated with other composers, giving them an opportunity um, to get their music placed in TV and film, and um, just making it a team effort, uh, and, and and just you know exposing other people to this, this great side of the business, and um, replicating what worked, and then just being persistent, you know, consistently reaching out. Uh, to companies, to music supervisors, um, following up strategically. So not just saying, "Hey, did you did you hear the music yet? Did you hear the music yet?" No, like follow up with um, with more music. Hey, you know, just recently finished up a, another production album. Just finished up a few singles with this amazing artist. You know, thought you may want to check it out. And just keeping that line of communication open with existing relationships. Um, while building new relationships. And, and that's how I, you know, ended up getting, you know, over a, a hundred last year. Amazing. Thank you. And was that through, would you say, mostly publishing or publisher side? Or is that, you know, just the relationships you had? How how did that come about? Um, a, a combination of both on the, the publishing side and then just the, the relationships that I have through um, through other publishers that I work with. Amazing. And, and that kind of leads me to my next question for anyone on the panel. Has, have any of you had success with cold emailing people and how did that turn out? I, I've had, I've had success with that. I, I believe in, I believe in cold emailing. You know why? Because if you don't put it out there, people never know who you are. Right. And if you send, if you say the right things in your message, and you send the right thing attached to your email, people, you know, you have to realize that everybody that you send an email to is in need of something, right? They, they have a title underneath their name because they can deliver whatever their title says that is, right? But in order for them to be dope and be looked at by their clients on their team as being efficient, and on top of things, you know, is they have to have people that are feeding into them. They have to have people that they don't have to call. People have to come to them. Things should just arrive at the doorstep. You know, everybody gets uh, stuff from Amazon, right? It just sits on your doorstep. You just bring it into your house, right? So I look at it as bringing something to somebody's house. Listen, you didn't know about me. I'm not a bugaboo and I'm not trash. I'm actually good, right? And if you're good and you feel like, you know what? I really think that I have a great product, right? I don't, I don't recommend this for people who, who don't, who feel nervous or they're hesitant, right? About, oh, I don't know, I'm just, start you don't do that for, if you're just starting out. But if you know that you are, you know, Jizzle and you are X, Y, and Z, you're everybody else on the panel and everybody who's in this, who's listening to Clubhouse, and you, you know you're good. And you know you're good, you definitely, you definitely submit that cold email because all it takes is five seconds for somebody to listen to your track. And they're gonna listen to the next five seconds and the next five seconds. And who's my man on the panel that does the stadium joints, the anthem joints? That's that bro. dude, I bet you, I bet you that you can listen to five seconds 
10 seconds, 15 seconds of his track and, and want to listen to more. And because he knows he can't come with something nonsense in the beginning. So once you know, and you have the point, and my man who just said he has a hundred placements in one year, and I applaud you uh, for that as well. Cause that's, you know, doing that for a year and doing that for 20 years. And that's a skill unto itself. And guess what? That means, you know, the formula, because guess what? Everything that we hear since we've been little kids, whether it was the happy birthday song or everything on, on Kids Place Live or the radio, everything has a formula. You know what You know what Ralph McDaniels told me years ago? He's from Music Box, right? Ralph McDaniels said, you know what? I said, Ralph, all I want you to do is hear my song right here. I just want you to hear it. And he listened to it. And he said, you know what, what Wendell? That song is dope, right? But it don't have that sound for Hot 97. It don't have that sound for the pop champ. It don't have that certain sound that's popping right now, right? And so I only say that because there's a formula to music and, and music is timely. And if you hit around, hit the right formula and the right time, you know, over and over, you can get a consistent momentum that, that lathers yeah. the soap, right? And next thing you know, boom, you're in there and now you're a go-to person. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's I think that's really, really great perspective. Bo, I'm, I see you, you unmuted. Did you have something to add to that, man? Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to say hallelujah to that, man, because you really that's that's exactly what it's like. And and I that a lot of that resonates with me. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. And um, I just kind of want to piggyback on that and reinforce that a bit and just say that, you know, out, out of like, I think at this point I have uh, maybe 1500 uh, sinks uh, under my belt. And, you know, almost half of those are from me um, just sending cold emails. Um, when I came to LA, I didn't know anybody. Like I'm from a small town in Florida called Sarasota. Diraj will know where this is at. Um, shout out Florida, yeah. Shout out Florida. So, you know, we would actually go to the Rogers hometown in order to like get out because it was like so small. So <laughs> right. when I moved to LA, I didn't know a single person. And actually my first, um, as I admit, I was already making music at that point. You know, I did like 106 and Park Freestyle Friday and retired on that. I, I was doing things. But when I came to LA, it was a completely different coast. I knew zero people. And, um, you know, I met, I met my, my uh, longtime collaborator, Dan Gartreau, who is uh, actually also my mentor in this starting out as well. And, um, you know, like I said, that first song that we made together became, um, became you know, the thing to, to launch my career. But that's, that's pretty much it. It was just me and Dan. Um, so now 1,500 sinks later, a lot of that is about relationship building, reaching out to people and letting them know that, you know, as a small business, I exist and I have a product that uh, fulfills a need in the marketplace. So, you know, a lot of people feel a certain way about, you know, putting themselves out there, but, you know, nobody's going to promote you harder than yourself. You know, even, even the label you're signed to um, that has a roster of people, you know, you still need to get out there and work no matter what your situation is, no matter what the business is around you. You've got to look at yourself as a small business with a, um, um, you know, with a stock of product and you got to go out there and push that product, you know, and, and you know, my background and where I come from um, before music uh, very much so fuels that kind of spirit, that kind of hustler spirit and just getting off of the product. And, and you know, you got to treat things that way and let people know you have something uh, available. And, you know, just like Wendell said, you know, if you're a Jizzle, if you're a Vo Williams, if you're a Daraj, if you're, you know, anybody who, who is bringing real, if you're a Clint, if you bring anybody who's bringing real value, um, then when you reach out to people like I experienced, they were like, yo, where have you been? Like, not only, I mean, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, there was no hip hop with, with sensibility for film. Like my, like the sound that I make, like this kind of scale, this kind of size, this, this isn't radio music. You know what I mean? Uh, which I love, by the way, but this isn't Drake. They, like this isn't gonna chart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when they were like, they were like, "Yo, I got, I got Tom Cruise jumping out of an airplane. He can't do that. He can't do that to, uh, to uh, the Tusi slide." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he's like, he's like, where? He's like, where's this? Where's this guy Vo been? Who loves rock? Who loves metal? Who loves hip hop? Loves electronic? 
who wants his music to have this big size that, that initially the, the idea was to fill stadiums and to fill that space. But wow, that actually works to lift epic picture. And that's, and, you know, and so it was more so a thank you with that cold email, which was my first one. And that, that inspired me to keep going because it's like, yo, I, people are looking for me and they can't find this. And it, it you know, um, so yeah, you never know. I mean, if you really, if you really bring a lot of value to the space, you're passionate about what you do, you've done your research and you know that you're solving a problem uh, in the space. You're, you're, you're creating technology, you're creating a solution in the space that is gonna lift the industry. You gotta hit people up and they're gonna thank you for, for hitting them up if you, got, if you got that juice, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanna throw that out there on the back of what Wendell said, which I thought was brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, Let's, absolutely. That's a fact. Yeah. And uh, like I always tell people like, don't be there's no reason to be scared when you're reaching out you know like wendell said be confident um like vo said like you're you're solving a problem if you have something that people need which tv shows need music commercials need music these movies need music like they need what you have um so don't don't hold back or, or feel afraid um for reaching out just do it um that's the only way you're going to see what could come of it that's the only way you're going to grow because you have to get that feedback. Um, even even if you're not com confident that the music is 100 percent ready, like put it, send it out there, put it out there, get that feedback so you can continue to grow, continue to get better. And, you know, you can go up from there. I love this. Thank you all so much for your advice. Super, super helpful for the audience, I'm sure. Um, my next question is actually a two part for Shalea and Steph. I actually had the honor of introducing chef, or sorry, <laughs> chef, you are a chef, right? Steph. <laughs> um, introducing Steph and Shalea, and they have created a beautiful song, as I mentioned earlier, called Grace. And I'm just curious about the writing process for that song, because I know the history of it, but I would love for you to share a bit more about the sync aspect to it and how that came about. Well, I know for me, it was it was uh, definitely another first for me it was the very first Zoom writing session I had ever done. And I'm, you know, like all of us, we, we want that energy, everybody in the same room, there's something magical and beautiful that happens as us all breathing the same air. That sounds so foreign now, but, but doing a Zoom, I just was wondering like, is it gonna be the same magic? Is it gonna, is it gonna, you know, are we gonna still feel that that energy? And it blew my mind, you know, me and Steph and, and Jason Gleed, you know, wrote this song called Grace. And, um, you know, Steph, obviously this is, you know, she's the sync queen. And so uh, it wasn't so much that this was on our mind when we were, you know, choosing to write a song of, of how many placements, but definitely it was something we would think about when we were, you know, choosing which lyrics and, and what, what themes would be universal and what sounds too preachy and what sounds, you know, uh, welcoming and what, what is really the pulse of what's happening right now, uh, in our world. And, um, and that's kind of how we we kind of came, you know, we created this song based on that, just grace. You know, I was just kind of looking around and just seeing how easy it was for cancel culture to be, you know, in the conversation, in the equation. And I, and I just asked the question, can I get a little grace? And that's how the, the chorus starts. And so um, I'll let Steph kind of talk a little bit more about it. But I I, I do feel like it's a, a sink gold, you know, in my heart. Um, because I feel like that's, I've just been seeing that phrase everywhere. Just, you know, just we need to give ourselves grace and to give others. And so, um, Steph, I'll pass it over to you. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, got a little teary eyed over here. I wanted to um, share that one of the most amazing things that we get to do, and we haven't publicly announced this yet, but since it's just a hundred of my clubhouse friends and family, why not just drop it in this room? <laughs> um, we have been working on an initiative called Major Minor, uh, which we're gonna launch over the next month, which is um, an opportunity to create a space for female and BIPOC creators. Alyssa and I, Jizzle, Shalea, all the Jason, all the people on our team, we belong to multiple really great initiatives. She is the music, uh, BMAC, BMC, all these really great initiatives. And what we noticed is 
you know, music was getting a little more and more segregated. We were getting separated into groups, especially as women, as, uh, you know, my partner, my writing partners like Jizzle and I get to write all the time and she's on our board and is, you know, a creative partner of mine. Being able to see what was different for me uh, as a white woman as versus Jizzle as a black woman or Alyssa, my manager as a black woman or Shalaya as a black woman, totally different experience than mine. So we really noticed that we needed to do something about, you know, doing versus talking. So we created what we call the major minor standard, which is all the songs that we aim to write for sync are written by and or produced by at least 50% or more female and BIPOC creators which means everybody can write together, but it has to be at least 50% of that. And I just have to tell you, is, this is gonna sound like a real douchey story, but <laughs> when I was first introduced to Shalaya, it happened to be in Quincy Jones's living room and it was his birthday party. And I heard this voice sounding like, I'm gonna say it, Whitney Houston, but even stronger. And I turned around and please pardon my New York French. And I was like, who the fuck is that? Where is that coming from? And in the living room was this, you know, stunning Shalaya singing her face off with the amazing Greg Phelan Gaines. And if you don't know who he is, you should look him up. He's amazing. Uh, and when I got the opportunity to work with QJP, I said to Alyssa, the first thing we did was I got to work with Shalaya. She's unbelievable and you know as we started curating this catalog for you know sync licensing for major minor she was the first artist that we went to that we said okay we got to do this jizzle in the same week same thing we were working on something for major league baseball um, i'm really fortunate to be surrounded by incredibly strong women and who happen to also be strong black women so you know we're really grateful to you know create that space. Thank you, Steph and Shalea. Um, so my next question is for Vo. Vo, earlier you mentioned that you had started out in battle rap. I actually know a lot of, you know, the battle rap community and it's super fascinating. And I'm just curious how you made that transition from battle rap to sync. Um, well, for me, it was um, it was pretty natural. Um, I just by the time I moved to Los Angeles, I was already kind of evolving out of battle rap and focusing more on um, developing my songwriting, uh, which, as you know, uh, battle rap and, and and writing songs is is just like two different uh, approaches to the medium. So um, so yeah, at, by that point, I, I had already become a pretty um, pretty focused songwriter, uh, just naturally, just over time. That's great. And then did you have relationships in the business when you got started or how did that come about? Um, no, actually, you know, I mean, well, with battle rap, I was just watching, um, I was watching BET's 106 in part Freestyle Friday, man, from home, you know, and from the barbershop and they did an open call. Um, and you know, me and my homies were like, yo, it's a long shot. I know my, I know my homie concept is in here. Um, we were like, yo, let's uh, let's go up to New York and let's try to do this. And, you know, we battled through maybe like a thousand or two thousand kids that were in New York because we forgot that there were rappers in New York. And um, and yeah, I, I ended up getting on the show. And um, uh, yeah, it was it was a great opportunity. I retired in front of Jay-Z on Black Album Day. It was um, it was an amazing opportunity. Uh, but, you know, it, we. <laughs> I, things that it, it didn't my artist career didn't really you know I was very much so still doing things by myself and independently so I didn't have the tools to um to develop that opportunity into um an artist career I didn't really have that team around me um so you know time passed and then by the time I moved out to LA I was just continuing to write music and um like I said I I just I took advantage of that opportunity to work with my buddy Dan just to get in the studio out here and and um and make some music with somebody and just have, and just create art. Uh, and that turned into a sync career, uh, which was about 10 years ago, so. Can I just piggyback off that real quick? Because what I, I, wanna, I wanna emphasize one thing that I think is very, very important. And, and someone said, uh, I think, uh, I don't know who it was, but they, they said earlier that music people, I think unless I'm getting my panels, cause I was on a panel at seven o'clock today too. Unless I'm getting my panels crisscrossed, 
I think it was said that music composers or producers have an, have an advantage on sync because a lot of times the music, that everything starts with the music or whatever. I just want to say this too, because from hearing my man just talk just now and, and hearing about his successes, I want to say that as a music producer slash composer, we use the people we have success with. So if my man who was just talking is continuing to have a success and he brings success to us, what do we do? We call him again for the next one and we call for the next one. And that's consistent with clients. If they have success with you in that one particular sync for that particular project, they're going to hit you up for another one and they're going to hit you up for another one. So consistency is very, very uh, important here uh, to put out there and also it's also on the flip side, and in a very self-serving way, I want to thank everyone for allowing me to be on this panel because now I'm hearing from a host of beautiful, amazing, talented people that I want to be in touch with too because I have too many projects on my plate and I want to assign them. I want to, boom, can you, can you work on this? Can you rap on this? Can you sing on this? Da, da, da. And I want to just let's do that. And I want to say, by me being a little self-serving here, I also want to say that the moment you develop consistency with one artist is also the moment that you want to open yourself up to some other artists because you don't want to come back to the same client over and over with the same approach. And, 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 and I, I say approach. I don't say come back with the same artist. I say you don't want to come back with the same approach because what the same artist can reinvent themselves over and over or whatever in order for it to be fresh and still something that hits them in a surprising way that says, oh, I love this and blows their mind. But if you come with the same approach and the rapper has the same cadence and the same delivery and the music is exactly the same, that might work for one, two, three, four spots, five spots. But let's just say two years from now, you don't, you don't want to be the same thing over and over. And that's one thing to get across. And I'll leave it at this, is that in advertising with brands and with TV shows and movies, everybody wants their own original sounding product, piece of music, vocal to fit that particular moment. And a moment in 2019 is different from a moment in 2021. So you need to constantly evolve. And how do you, you constantly evolve your sound? You reinvent yourself, you do new things, and you work with new people and you embrace your team and you expand your team. So you have a full plate and this full diversity in the sound that you present. Thank you, Wendell. <laughs> Preaching over here, I love it. <laughs> um, that was that was a whole lot of game right there, by the way. I just want to say that. Right. Facts. Right. Facts. Absolutely. Yeah. So Jizzle, actually I wanna talk to you next. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you have a background in battle rap, am I correct? Uh yeah, you're right. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about how battle rap helped you get your start and whether or not that related to sync today? Uh yeah, like well, that's I started battle rapping um around the city. I'm from LA, and uh, battle rap is not super popular in LA, especially like when I when I was doing it. We we kind of you know you know in LA the culture is a little different, it, especially in the rap scene, lean more towards like a gang culture. So uh, battle rapping was something that um, I had saw and studied you know, just studying hip hop and, and, and music overall. And, and, and I just love like the quickness and the humor uh, that that came along with that. So it was just like a skill I wanted to have. And so, you know, I would kind of just go around the city and kind of bait out any battles that I could, <laughs> I could find. And um, just doing that and being so young, you know, cause I was still in high school and just showing up all these places. Everybody's like, who is this little girl, you know, showing up battling everybody all around the city and, and from there that was like how I kind of got my first eyes in the industry uh with Usher uh seeing me battle rap uh one of his dancers uh at the time so you can see how thirsty I was for the battle I battled the dancer 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but um, that worked out because that was my intro to the industry. And, you know, with him saying, oh, my God, who is this girl? She's incredible. I want to sign her. And, of course, you know, your path takes you in many different places. But but that uh, got me my eyes. What, what, how I can say um, it contributes to sync for me is that, you know, like I was saying earlier, I think of everything, every experience that I've had, every person that I've met, um, anything that's, that went my way, didn't go my way, was always leading me, you know, ultimately on the path that I'm on just in life. And so I feel like uh, battle rapping and, and learning to be quick on my feet, that made me quicker in the rooms, makes me quicker to deliver, uh, you know, when the song is due. So I, I think, you know, in that aspect, it helped, it helped me. I love that. Thank you. Alexa. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. May I ask a question? I just we, there's just a lot of battle rap talk going on, and I follow URL. I need Alyssa, Vo, and Jizzle to just tell me who are some of y'all top battle rappers nowadays. Because this is, I, I'm oh, just oh. this is a treat right now. Easy call, <laughs> easy call. Uh, Daylight, King Lowe's, man. I know I like Jag, uh, yeah. Tubby Jag. I mean, it's a. Hey, it's some, there's some new ones. I, I mean, I always be like a loaded Lux murder mook fan. You know, that's like, you know, if you really going, if if we going right. there, you we know what I'm back. saying? Right, 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 right. Yeah, man. I love yeah. I love loaded Lux. I love murder mook. Conflict. Sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm real. I'm real big on Rum Nitty and Daylight. Daylight's kind of my top. But Rum Nitty is like one of the oh yeah, heavy yeah. shooters out here. Now. Daylight's nasty. Daylight's also from LA. He's from Watson. Yep. You know, one time for the home team. You know, yeah, yeah. Cause, cause West, out there. Coast, West Coast battle rap is not really when you think about like it, it's, it's it. We had to make it a thing for it to be a thing. And I, I'll give you all a quick little just little West Coast battle rap nugget. But me, uh, Jag, Daylight, um, AV, you guys might might have heard of Mickey Monday. He was on Love and Hip Hop, uh, Bad Luck from Watts and uh, Sticks. We all started in this place called The Pit. And, uh, you know, that's when. Everybody who rapped in L.A. would come up there. We, we went up there every Friday. We would battle, uh, you know, the Kendrick Lamars, the YGs. Every, everybody pulled up to come to the pit. And that's where, um, you know, everybody sharpened their skills. You know, I remember the first time uh, Daylight came to the pit because he was like the second, like the second generation of the rappers that came once we had it for a while. So it's, it's cool to see how he was able to push the, uh, the battle rap game forward and disaster, too. He came out the pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, real West Side things. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't mean to digress. I just had to go there real quick. So I'm going to let you run it, listen. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, Deraj, I thought Deraj was about to ask him the battle rap, like, right That's here. what I thought, too. I was like, let's go. Hey, yo, I need some poof. Bo and Jizzle right now. Oh. <laughs> That's going to cost you, Playboy. Hey, yeah, man. Hey, look, Alyssa got the bag. She's going to set it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, well, while we're still talking to you, Jizzle, can you tell us if you have a favorite sync experience? I know you've got a lot under your belt, and I would love to hear more about maybe one of your favorites. Um, I, I think, I don't know. It's been a lot of cool moments, but I, I think the latest one – I think it's always cool when you're like watching the show and you actually like it and then your song comes on. So I was like really into a love, a Lovecraft country. I don't know if you guys were watching that uh, like during the pandemic, but it was like super cool horror black sci-fi show. I thought it was super dope. And then I ended up getting a joint on there. Um, Fortnite's pretty cool. Cause I'm, that made me cool to like all my little cousins and kids and stuff. So you know, you like tell them like, yeah, I got a song on Fortnite. They're like, for real? And you're like automatically cool. So I think ultimately, like my goal is to be cool to kids and like, you know, in the future when I have kids. So that's what I think about when I'm doing like my sync stuff. Like I can't wait to tell my godson and my nieces like, yeah, yeah, your taco and your TT, yeah, that's me right there, you know? So <laughs> this is dope. That was great. Thanks, Dizzle. Um, so one of my, my last questions, since I know we're going to be wrapping up and resetting the room soon, is uh, for, for Matt. And Matt, earlier you mentioned that you had a compilation CD that was used for a film. And since we don't use CDs anymore, how are you getting your music in the hands of the right people? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that CD was it was it was back in two thousand four, two thousand five. Right now, um, I have an agent. I am signed to uh, First Artist Management. I have a couple of agents that um, look out for me on some things. Um, but a lot of my success, and still to this day, is like my relationships with directors and producers. Um, my biggest thing for me was to network with people I want to work with. And so my whole goal was to, I knew I couldn't get to Spielberg, but I can get to a Trey Haley, you know, or, or get to a, a up and coming film director, um, you know, that was working. And so what I did was I usually reached out to like, you know, student directors at USC and UCLA and, you know, Georgia State and University of Georgia and literally be like, hey, I want to score your film. I'm a composer. I need to practice. You need some music. Let me work with you. And what that ended up doing, you know, those directors I worked with, you know, 15 years ago now have television shows and, and movies and series. And, you know, a guy I worked with, you know, Trey Haley, he was literally, he had, you know, doing a commercial and I met him on Twitter and he literally was like, hey, I commented on his shoes and said, hey, man, I love your shoes. And it was very simple comment. And he come in the bell, like, hey, thanks, man. I went to your website and you make good music. I'm shooting a commercial. I was like, all right, cool. Let me let me do the music for it. Did the music for it. And then 10 years later, he has a series on BET and I'm his composer and I've composed all of his, you know, movies and television series. Um, same with Pete Valley. I met Katori Hall, same way, just kind of you meet people and you and you kind of network with them on that level. And, you know, when it's time for music, they called me. Um, and so now with that, you know, I still have the relationships, but um, my new relationships really come from my agency. After I worked on those directions and worked with those people, agents will start to reach out and say, hey, you know, you, you were the composer on this movie or you're a composer on this television show. We want to represent you in some kind of way. And it leads, you know, that go down to a different road with them. But, you know, I was very big on just working with people that I know in my heart that can lead to other opportunities. I wasn't trying to, I've never tried to like reach out to the Spielbergs and, you know, those big guys. I was like, I'll find a kid that's, you know, has a camera and needs music for his film. I even still do that. I did a film for uh, a USC director, Latia Solomon, and it was amazing. She it's called the Cipher. It was for her graduate program, and I met her through a friend of mine who's a producer. And he's like, "Hey, is there any way you, she needs music for her film? You know, I know you. I know she doesn't have any money. Are you available?" I'm like, "Yeah, she's a USC director." And then ended up we did the movie, the Cipher. It was a short film. I scored it, and all of a sudden, it turns in, into a you know, it got on HBO Max last weekend, and it won a couple of festivals and. I did that for free, like last summer, and she's now working on a Netflix series and doing all these things. And that's who she calls. She calls me. So it's one of those things where I always felt like you know, relationships and being in the room with people that can take you to another level and being part of something bigger than you. Um, you know, I was that. That was my 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 road, and I continue to do that even with my agent now. He'll call me and say, "Hey, I got this opportunity." I'm like, "Well, who's the director? Who is he?" Or who is she so I can get a relationship with them because I don't want this to be a one-off situation. I want to continue to work with them. You know, directors work with people they know. You know, business is personal. So you only work with people you work with, who you mess with. So if I'm cool with you, I'm going to continue to work with you. Um, my team is the same way. I have a small team of people I work with. And I'm going to continue to work with them until the wheels fall off. So it's like, let's continue to, you know, see what we come from that. So I'm the same way with my with my with my music as well. I love that you said you reached out to student directors. I don't think that's something a lot of artists do, but it's important to note that everyone has to start somewhere, right? So those students, like you said, will grow up into, you know, becoming the next big director or filmmaker. So definitely yeah, something I mean, to if, point if you, out. Yeah, if you think about it, like Ryan Coogler, you know, you know, 20, 15 years ago, was a USC student and his composer is Ludwig, you know what I'm saying? And him and Ludwig became cool and now everything Ryan Coogler is directing, he hires the composer that helped him at, a, at the same level. So I, I'm, I'm, I, I learned that a long time ago. You know, I mean, that's how I got my first opportunity. My first opportunity was somebody I met and I knew. Um, they had my CD and literally we've known each other for a while, but he worked with me because he knew I made music. It wasn't one of those, I'm looking for a composer. You're like, I'm, I'll call Matt because Matt makes music every day. And that led to 
all the other opportunities that came my way. So it, I'm just real big on, you know, um, it's not a very hard um, uh, equation. It's literally you go to people that, you know, looking for an opportunity. And even me, like now with, with what I've done, you know, I would still reach out to a, you know, do stuff for free. Like I did something for free uh, two weeks ago. And like, yeah, let's just work. Because I know 10 years from now, five years from now, you know, something will happen where that person will look back and say, I got my music from Matthew Head. You know, just like Wendell said, we're all can make anything and everything. That's not a problem making a trap beat or any kind of, you know, what, it's not a problem doing that. But my my thing is I want to be involved with people that want me, want to work with me, you know, and per se, then just get tracks and music, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's that's my, I guess my formula. And can I tell you, piggyback off that real quick, is that there's room for everybody. If you if you notice, we've been talking for what, a, a year, I mean, a, a, an hour and a half or almost, and everybody has has their own journey and everyone has their own successes, which means we're not in competition with each other. This is not about that. This is about, there's so many people in this world and there are so many people in need, right? And you always have somebody to fulfill that need. If you take a, if you take a puzzle with a thousand pieces, right? You got, in order for that puzzle to be complete, there has to be a thousand pieces which means people need a thousand pieces of music, a thousand pieces that feature a vocalist rapping or singing on, right? There's so many projects. So don't listen to this panel and get intimidated in any way because a, a kid with a banjo and an accordion in Iowa might have the perfect piece of music that none of us on this panel ever even thought of. And that's the beauty of music. And that's the beauty of voice is that nobody makes the same piece of music twice, right? I can make a piece of music. Nobody will ever make the same piece of music that I make, period. Nobody will have the same exact voice that I have or that Jizzle has or that Vo has. But anybody on this panel there's so much room for so many, so much talent. All you have to do is take, take this advice and start tomorrow. If you want to start tonight and start emailing people tonight, but start because the moment you start is the beginning of your success. Yeah. Good words, man. Good words. Hallelujah, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, to, uh, you know, set up a podcast or something because I need to listen to you inspire me every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Real tough. <laughs> All right, so I know we're gonna jump into the Q and A shortly here in just a couple minutes, but um, I actually wanted to just give Shalea really quickly the opportunity to tell people where her single Grace is because I know we talked about it, but we didn't necessarily say where you can find it. And I know it's a little bit of a shameless plug here, but I think it's important so people can hear the song that she was referencing. Oh, thank you so much. Very sweet, Alyssa. <laughs> yes, it's available streaming everywhere. Uh, title, um, uh, help me out, Steph. <laughs> Amazon everywhere. On iTunes, Pandora. iTunes, Pandora, yeah. Uh, Spotify, of course. Big one, yeah. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Yes, yes. For you sure. get it on CD, you can get it on yes i'll sing i'll sing it for you can i get a little grace i heard you sing it live on zoom and it was amazing that was just like i think you were sitting down it was like a flawless i think you were sitting on the couch and you were just singing like you were standing on standing at the front of the stage it was amazing yes oh thank you so much shalaya you did an amazing job too on the the clark sisters movie i know dorinda and well hold up hold up clint i was about to go i wanted to ask a question actually official question okay okay Okay. (laughs) yeah because i I, i'm glad you did i wanted before we switch into the reset i did want to ask while you were talking shalaya about that with the because this is a different type of sync and you and also matt can jump in because you both have been on this 
types of things that take place during the production stage of TV mm. shows. And and so just give give some insight, Shalaya, and then Matt also jump in your on terms of just um one, you're playing the character of Dorinda Clark Cole, and you're also right. singing the songs, which means you're you're filming the parts, but then you're also going to the studio to record sessions and record your voice and all this. So let's talk. talk give us a little about that insight of this side of sync that a lot of people don't have access insight to. Yeah, it was incredible. Um, the before we said one line on or stepped on a set of any kind, we we made a beeline to the studio and we uh, re-recorded all of uh, the Clark sister songs um, just from ground zero um, instrumentation, um, everything. Donald Lawrence was, um, was the MD on that. I'd give a little shout out to him. He just got an um, NAACP nomination for it, which is uh, quite deserved um, because when we were, we put a little ta- a little clip out there before the movie even came out, and no one could believe that um, that wasn't the real Clark sister singing. But he was he was really really helpful into getting us to just that core and the center of. If anybody knows the Clark sisters sound, it's very very specific. Um, if anybody knows Dorinda's sound, it's also even more specific. She kind of sings like a horn player um, and she has clear she has both clarity and rasp at the same time which is which is very uh difficult to, <laughs> to emulate but but some, somehow I found it and and um and it was it was just an incredible incredible experience of us just kind of bringing those songs to life and 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 yeah the, the songs that we you know put out ended up being just as popular um, as the originals and, and, and people were, you know, just loving, loving our, our interpretation of that. So that was, that was a really, really, uh, life-changing experience for me. That is awesome. Matt, would you, you just from Greenleaf and, um, Step Up High Water, just the aspect, would you want to share something about getting, creating music, uh, that you're getting, you're getting direction sometimes the day before, sometimes the day of. You have to create music for the show. It's a sync, but like, again, totally different thing. Um, how has that informed you just in terms of the creation process? Yeah, man, it's uh, working on those kind of shows and movies are really cool. Um, so I was hired to be the music producer for Greenleaf season two and season three um, and hired to be the music producer for Step Up last season with Timberland and then step up this season right now. And the cool thing about, you know, what's happening with a lot of television shows right now is that you see it's kind of being built around music um, um, scripts. So you have shows like Empire, you have shows like uh, Step Up, you have shows like uh, Used to Black Lee and those kind of things. And um, they're building music into the scripts. So a lot of times you have your music supervisor they need someone on the ground to actually make the music as the script is being built or as the show is being shot. Um, a lot of these shows are, you know, the actors and the actresses are actually singing in the show. Um, so, you know, Greenleaf was, was heavy and Step Up is the same way. It's kind of like, you know, so they hired me because I was familiar with composition and film and, and reading scripts and knowing how things kind of flow uh, and was able to kind of get things quickly and done. And, you know, so I built a small team Eric was one of uh, one of the writers from Young Greenleaf, and we all kind of get together, and I'll read the script and have a conversation with the director, director, producers, and music supervisor to find out exactly what is needed, and we actually go make the song that is needed for the show, for the performances, and pre-recorded, very similar to what um, with the Clark Sisters, um, and I'm actually I did that for Mahalia. We just shot Mahalia with um, Kenny Leon and, and um, Daniel Brooks, so we just I just finished scoring and doing all the music for that same same process you know Danielle got with me early last year we went in and knocked out all the songs that we you know were licensed to do and then come back and reshoot the scene so it's a very um I never saw myself in that role because I was more on the composing side of everything um but by me being in Atlanta and a lot of shows and a lot of things being shot here um I had to go back and pick up my production chops and go back and learn how to go back and redo those things I used to do. Like on Step Up, I'm making tracks and and having to find artists and songwriters to kind of you know push along the, the episodes and stuff like that. So it's real cool. I'm 
think it's fun. Um, it's stressful um, because we have a lot of a lot of a lot of people to to uh, get approved for it. But um, really, 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 um, you know, life changing um, process. And a lot of television shows are doing this. Um, P Valley. That's how you know I did that on P Valley as well, um, which transitioned to the composing job because you know I was making all the tracks and all of a sudden they were like, well, you might as well go ahead and score it because we want to make sure it transitions the right way. So it was one of those things where a lot of you know a lot of music is being used in different ways in television um, in the television world and as well as the film side too. That is so awesome. Thank you both for um, sharing that insight. That's, again, that's something that we really haven't talked much about in Control Camp. And um, there's so many different levels and sides of sync we're trying to expose the community to to just all the different lanes. So appreciate that. Um, all right, so let's switch now. Let the Raj do a reset. And I'm going to lift up... Um, I'm going to turn hand raising off. We'll have, we have a little bit of time. we got like 25 minutes. We can do some Q&A. If everybody on the panel is cool with that, we'll let people come up and ask some questions. So um, a lot of times in Control Camp, we do our questions generally, but today we're going to make it specifically around the panel for the panel, panel, for the panel members, panelists. So if you have a question, just as we always do, it's one question. Um, we don't do, you know, we don't do follow-ups really here. We just try to keep things moving. So come up, we ask your question. We'll put you back down in the audience, but you'll be able to hear the answer uh, to your question. We'll try to get as many as we can in this time. Uh, so let's uh, let Daraj do the reset, and then we'll, we'll go from there. And before I do the reset, I just got to let Clint continue, continue to give Shalaya her flowers because we, we cut them off, man. I need you to go ahead. You oh, my bad. Oh, I'm man. sorry, Clint. That was my fault. That was my fault. <laughs> Y'all good, man. No, no, I just wanted to say, Shalaya, you did a great job on the movie. Um, I was going to say, don't tell the Clark sisters this, but Dorinda and Karen are, are, the, are my two favorite personally. <laughs> but I feel like, you, I mean, yeah, yeah, the whole cast did an amazing job. Um, from the singing to the records to the acting, it was amazing. So kudos to you guys. Thank you, and Shalea. Thank you so much. And I, I do want to just point out too. I want to give uh, Christine Swanson a special shout out. She was the director, and she was um, emphatic that the the singers needed to be able to sing live because that's the the essence of who the Clark sisters are. And so there's many moments um, where we are actually singing live. Um, you know, there's a scene in, in the hospital, we're singing live, there's a scene in the living room, we're able to just, just off the cuff, be able to sing live. And that was a big part of what she wanted um, for this film. And I feel like it, it definitely made it stand apart from the rest. Absolutely, very cool. So, oh man, I'm so excited we have, I mean, Bo, Clint, Shalea, Jizzle, Matthew, Wendell, like, I appreciate y'all being a part of this panel. Like, I'm still kind of in awe of all of the talent we have sitting on stage right now. I mean, it's just years and years and years of experience. Um, and so I, I'm super excited. I know there's a lot of audience members kind of itching to um, to ask their questions. So I'm going to do this, this rumor set real quick, and we're going to jump right into it. Uh, and so for everyone just joining us, welcome. We are Control Camp, a community built for independent artists who are wanting to get their music uh, into TV and film. And we do this room every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and if you wanna stay up to date and never miss uh, what we have in the rooms that we um, create every week, uh, shoot me a text. Uh, my number is in my bio. You'll be able to get in contact with us directly and get alerts on um, new resources and exclusive rooms. Uh, so we make that available to everybody. And again, my cell is in my bio. And also, if you are uh, if you came in a little late, don't worry, we record our rooms and those are made available uh, on our website, controlcamp.com. If you visit our Sync 101 page, uh, there's a link to our Patreon and we have all of our past rooms available for you. Uh, and they're just really, really dense with conversations like this. We interview uh, composers, uh, publishers, music supervisors. Um, I mean, just see by the, the panelists that we have today, this is kind of the caliber of people we like to bring um, and make accessible to you all um, just, just to learn, you know what I mean? Just to listen and hear what it takes to succeed on this side of the industry. So swing over to our Patreon. We have that available uh, for you all. And uh, we're going to get into the next phase, which is the Q&A. So if you've had questions and you've been burning in your seat, go ahead and raise your hand. We're going to start pulling people up on stage. And we're going to uh, keep this thing rocking up until around 10. So 
Yeah, Eric, let's uh let's go ahead and make that transition, man. Dope. I'll bring him up. You can uh, call you call out. Uh, the I miss your. Uh, I miss your. Uh, like, have they noticed tech. a trend in the time? Hold, hold, hold on, real quick, uh, uh, Brandon. Uh, sorry, we were. I, I was a little. Uh, <laughs> usually, me and Eric kind of uh, switch off with, with Q and A, so I didn't realize I was moderating this one. But uh, let's. I'm gonna try to uh, PTR and just get everybody in order. So I think we have Isaiah up first for the Q and A. So Isaiah, w- welcome, bro. How are you? What's your question for us? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for Eric and Daraj uh, for just doing control camp. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate this one because of the all black um, panelists. And I really, really appreciate it. And my question is to any of the panelists. Um, I'm definitely new to um, write, trying to get into sync and writing for sync. Um, I guess my question would be for um, new collaborators that you're looking to work with. What do you look for? And are you in a position to um, to be able to teach as well as work with new um, talent that's And that question is open to any of the panelists if you want I, to I, 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 I'd like to answer that real quick and, I, and, then, and I'll, then I'll defer to everybody else. I have three books. The first one is volume one, the 3030 career, making 30 grand in 30 seconds, producing music for commercials. The second one is the 3030 career, becoming a platinum composer. The third one is the 3030 career, singing and basically rapping on commercials. So if you if you're any of those things, if you're a composer, if you're a beat maker, if you're a rapper, singer, any of those three books. So you, you spoke about teaching. Any of those three books will tell you everything you need to know about it. On top of that, I do do a course called on the, if you go to the 3030career.com, I do have a course where you can, if you're a music maker or a vocalist, I have a whole course where you can go through simulated programs where you can work on commercials that are actually live at the moment that you work on them. So in other words, if you sign up for a course, you can work on a commercial that we have right now that's for Budweiser or for Nike or for McDonald's or for anything, whatever we have at that particular moment, you can work on that at that moment. And as you're working on it and learning and, and being educated and, and, and talk to about the process and how to make it X, Y, and Z and make it something that wins, you have the end juggernaut of possibly winning. And I'll just say this, I had Alan Hayes, who took the course five months ago, took it as a course member, and he won in an Xfinity spot, a national Xfinity spot off the top. And he, and that was it. He, it was education. It was basically where education meets opportunity and where opportunity makes money, right? And so he was able to not only learn in the course, but actually earn from the course. And I'll say, I'll tell you this, I bet you every panelist on here, now I could be a little ambitious with this, but I think so because it comes, because this is how I feel. Everybody on here wants to know new, new emerging awesome talent. Like everybody who's on this panel that's introducing themselves today, that I've heard of today. I want everybody's email, please, now, somehow, Eric, if you can hook it up, because like I said earlier, we work with the people that we know and we always wanna know new people. And it's so amazing because everyone who spoke on this panel tonight, I'm blown away by everybody. And I wanna know everybody in some capacity because maybe there's room for collaboration. And at the end of the day, that's what life is about. It's about collaboration and teamwork because nobody gets where they want to by themselves. Yeah, we yeah. we'll make we'll make that that happen. And send send Wendell hey. my phone number so he can text me his morning inspirational tips because <laughs> th- these joints are on point. Big facts. <laughs> Big facts. That's so awesome. We need hey. to get you on the podcast, Wendell. Man, you need to pull up on the podcast, bro. To- 
The people want it, Wendell. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I love it, man. Also, uh, I didn't know if anybody else wanted to chime in, but I know Wendell did a great job on that. Yeah, nah, he, he said everything perfectly for me. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, we appreciate the, the question, Isaiah. We have Jay up next. Jay, what's going on? Hey, I just want a second window. I'm, I'm blown away by everybody on this panel. Um, and I guess my question is geared towards Matthew. It was something that he mentioned. I believe you were saying that you were producing on Greenleaf and at the same time they uh, asked you to compose as well since they had you there kind of use you multi-purposefully. And, I was, and then you said, I think that shows are trending that way. Do you think that that could mean that there would be less opportunity for other artists? And that was my question. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, so it was P Valley that did that. Greenleaf, I just was only the music producer. Um, but one thing that, you know, my, my testimony has always been is like relationships. You know, the only reason why, and I, I know talented, you know, talent plays a, plays a role in this, but my biggest name, my biggest game is to me is relationships. So I knew the showrunner of P Valley and I built a trust relationship with her and she knew it. And that's how it started. So I don't think that, you know, there's going to be plenty of opportunity, like Wendell said. It's, it's so much going on, you know, as we speak. There's so many shows being shot. So many movies are being shot that, you know, music is will always, always be needed in all these shows. I just think that a lot of people miss the relationship thing and the trust uh, angle of it. Um, because you work with who you work with. You trust who you work with who you trust. And that's been my my angle the whole time. I want to be a friend to you. I want to be. I want you to know that I have two kids and a wife, and I live out in Marietta, Georgia. And and I was, you know, I like the Hawks. You know, that's that's me. Um, because once I get that relationship with you, then we can talk music and talk business, you know, easily. Um, and then you will want to do music and business with me. So definitely, you know, me having relationships already in place allowed me to get those opportunities. But there isn't. Um, it's more opportunities for artists than when I was, you know, being, you know, making tracks and producing. Because now shows are open. They want independent artists. Uh, the show Step Up I'm working on right now, Step Up wants indie artists. You know, they're not looking for major artists because of, of licensing and a whole bunch of red tape with the labels. But now they're looking for independent artists. So we always get the, anyone that's looking for, you know, anyone that needs an opportunity, that's always open for that, to write music for that show or to have your music placed in that show. Um, and so it's always something that's going to continue to move forward. Um, I'm just real big on everyone knowing who they're talking to and build a relationship with that person more than anything, um, because that will allow you to go to other levels that you never saw before, because I am a testimony of that. I had to let a lot of friends go in the last couple of years. Eric knows this because they did, they forgot who they were dealing with and they wanted to go around or go underneath or go a different route. Or sometimes I like to say the music industry jades the the thought process of doing right, doing real business. And the film and television side is a lot different. It's more, it's more, you're part of a bigger picture. You're part of a bigger, you know, it's an assembly line. You're like working at a Ford factory. There's a hundred people that are working on one project. And so if you start building a relationship with those 100 people, then everything will lead to other ways. I'm working on a show now that I worked on shows with three years ago on different seasons of things. And it's just one of those things that we just continue to build and grow. So just really, 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 my biggest advice is focus on relationships and focus on building the relationship. And it may take five, 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, but at the end of it, you'll know it means more than just hopefully I get a placement and it goes away. You know what I'm saying? Man, Matthew, you're you're echoing, I think, uh, the sentiment that's probably said uh, every week by the famous staff, uh, just be human like in these interactions. Like you're dealing with people at the end of the day. So yeah, well yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. People, people, people don't get that. They look at, you know, they go IMDB you or Google you and think that you're, you know, this famous or whatever you do. I mean, they are they're gatekeepers, but they're also human beings. And I've ran into a lot of gatekeepers. And made them laugh, and then it was like, "Yeah, come, come do this show with me." So it's very, it's very simple. Once you make it hard, and once you make it complex, and when you focus on making the money, um, I had a 
someone messed up a deal that they could have, you know, Eric is the reason I met Eric off of someone else's mistake. And it was very like, dude, if you just said yes and just did the work, mm. you would have a song on a show. He didn't right. do that. Eric did. Eric's like, yeah, I do it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Eric's in the room. That's my default answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Eric was in the room. And I always tell people to stay in the room. Once you get in the room, stay in the room. Like, don't work yourself out the room. Don't talk yourself out the room. Stay in the room and, and sit in the corner and do what you're supposed to do or stay in your lane. And all of a sudden, you know, you're driving the car. And that's literally my role. I was hired on on Pete Valley to record vocals. Literally, mm-hmm. like, hey, we need someone in Atlanta to record the actor's vocals. All right, Matt can do it because Matt's familiar with, you know, with our, with Lionsgate and Greenleaf. Okay, great. Then I sat there and I was like, hey, you make tracks too, right? I'm like, yeah, I make tracks. All right, make us a track for this song. All right, make a track for this song. And then all of a sudden, someone Googled me and said, dang, you score films. I'm like, yeah. Why didn't you tell me you score films? I'm like, well, I score. Well, can you score the episodes? Yeah, call my agent. And that was it. It was that Ooh. simple. So it's not, it's, not as, <laughs> it's not as difficult as that, you know, you know, it's not difficult. It's difficult, yeah. but it's, it's not difficult. I'm being honest. Yeah. No, yeah, well said. I, 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 I like what you're, and, and this is your first time being in a room, but a lot of what you're saying is just sentiments that are echoed, you know, week in and week out. So I'm, I'm so thankful that you shared that, Matt. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to keep it going. We got uh, my, my boy, uh, Matt Keys, Brandon. What's going on, bro? Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Daraj, what's going on, Eric? Uh, first of all, thank you all so much. This panel really, this has been amazing. Like, I, so many nuggets, so many gems. And uh, Matthew, thank you for just sharing what you just shared because, man, that's definitely been just how I've uh, absolutely been navigating just my uh, like my music journey and everything. So, uh, but I'm a music producer, uh, composer, and I just had a quick question. I think uh, well, Jay kind of touched on trends, and that's what I was uh, that's what I was really curious about, just uh, in terms of trends um, in the types of music that. Uh, you that you all are seeing just with the just with the period these with the with these period type of shows and um, films and TVs uh, TV shows um, or have you all noticed uh, I guess a trend in the types and genres of music that certain um, filmmakers and supervisors are requesting and how is that you know affecting your workflows? Uh, real real quick, make good music. That's really it. I, what I've learned. You know, you got shows like Lovecraft, and in the middle, the music supervisor in the middle of the show, in the beginning of the of the movie, it's a period piece. But we hear Cardi B in the very beginning of the record of the other movie of a of the of a scene. Um, I lend, I tend to lean towards making good music and start and not really follow a trend, so to speak. Um, you know, we all make this music for a reason, so I think if we for don't forget why we create music. So I always try to create the music and if it becomes the trend, it becomes the trend. Um, I never try to make music for an op- for the show. I try to make the music with the show. So I want to grow with it. So, you know, you look at Lovecraft. Lovecraft was a period piece. If you watched it, you were thinking, well, okay, they're in the 40s and the 50s. I should have this kind of style. You would not expect hip hop. What made it so hot, made it so dope, that the music was contrast to what we were seeing. So, you know, the first thing you see Cardi B, you hear Cardi B record and she's talking crazy and there's a woman, you know, walking in heels in the 40s, a white woman walking the hills in the 40s. That kind of stuff is, is it leads to other, it, it's a special moment. So I will always, in my end of it, unless you're, you know, being told to be a certain direction, I'll always just make the direction that I feel emotionally and then allow that to be the trend, in my opinion, unless a director or a producer or or the script calls for hip hop trap sound. Cool. But even that, I'm still going to try to add a piece of what I think is hot because that's why I'm here. You know, if I don't think it's dope, then why am I making music? You know what I'm saying? Let me let me say something in 10 seconds. Let me say something in 10 seconds. And that is and, and that is this. Never make a piece of music because you think somebody else is going to like it. They tell you what they want and you think this is what they want and you make it, but you don't actually like it. Never do that. Why? 
because if you send it to them and they say they don't like it, and then you and all you can say is, "Well, I didn't really like it either." All right, and all they're gonna say is, "Well, if you didn't like it, why'd you send it to me?" It's just like a big mat. It's just like if somebody sends you a pie, you don't, you never send some your neighbor a pie that you don't like. You're like, "Oh, this pie is terrible. I'm gonna send it to my neighbor." Right? Don't do that. Only send something. The reason why people come to you in the first place, all right? The reason why you're even considered a vendor is because you are considered an expertise or a some somewhat a master at what you do. So if you're a master or an expertise, a master or an expertise never performs at a level below mastery and expertise. So only send what you like or what you love, and that's it. Period. Yeah, I kind of want to just piggyback off of um, both of those really great points and just, um, you know, because like a lot of artists who are looking to uh, to develop a career in this space, what they're trying to figure out is, you know, well, how can I predict the future? Um, how can I how can I give myself the best chances at success? Um, so you want to so you want to know what the market. Did we lose though? <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? So so, and the thing that, and the thing that I think is is um, is important to understand is that you know, in film, television, ads, and video games, there are there is a universe of stories and characters, periods, uh, spaces, genres, and all of these things need music, right? So it's not it's not it's not like you know everything on TV is hip hop or everything in video games is is you know hard rock and hip hop. Um, you know, it's, it's everything. So I think that if you just focus on what you do, um, and, um, and you make, you make, uh, a, a, an effort to create timeless and universal music, uh, and just use that as your foundation, um, then as long as you're speaking to the experience of, of humanity, then no matter what the genre is, there's going to be a place for it with some character or with some ad or, or something. I, I just want to, I just want to throw that out there. Dope point. Very dope. Yeah, yeah. One more thing, Eric, and I, I just wanted to make sure because I know I know Wendell probably deals with this, but as a composer, we get a lot of no's. Um, no's like this is not it, this is not it. So I know once I stop listening to my brain as far as I think they want this, instead of saying, Well, I would just do this. My yeses, my nose turned to yeses. I was working on Boomerang and I was scoring Boomerang the first season and I had put all this pressure on myself and I'm working with, you know, Lena Waithe and all that and and I watched the Boomerang movie. Like, I'm, this is what, you know, it has a jazzy kind of, you know, 90s kind of vibe. And I remember getting the episodes, I'm like, all right, I'm going to do all this jazzy 90s kind of vibe because the movie did it. So, and then I watched it, it was a whole bunch of kids and 19 year olds. So I sent the first cues in and I got like, no's, like, this is not it you're mad, you know, you just did stuff up. You're from Atlanta, like, we need that. And then I called a good friend of mine and he was like, man, just do what you normally would do. Just make your own stuff, don't listen. Not saying don't listen to them, but they hired you for a reason. And once I did that, those no's became yes. And what ended up happening, I began, I, I earned their trust. And then I could start adding the things that I felt, you know, even more that my brain was telling me, let's add some jazz in this moment. And it was like, oh, okay, we get it now. We understand, you know, we trust you to go there. So definitely what everyone's saying, make, if you make classic, vibey, you know, timeless, whatever you feel, is, you know, music is creative, just do you. And normally there will be a place for that music to be landed. Yeah. And, Let's and you know, it's amazing. Man. And let me tell you, I'm going to leave you with this. If Let me tell you this. Just quick if, window, because we want to get to the last thing before we stop. Yes, really quickly, really quickly. What's amazing about what he just said is this. He got a second chance and he may have got a third chance or a fourth chance. You know why he got that second, third, fourth chance? Because he's the music dude. 
So if you connect all these independent guys, everybody who's on this thing right now, if you're an independent artist, feature a male, female uh, independent artist, if you connect with the dude, like Vo's the dude, like I'm a dude, all right? If you connect with the person that's not going anywhere on the project, like it's their job to deliver, right? And you're an artist, then you have multiple chances to work on the project and get to the finish line. That's all I want to say. Work with that person. All right. <laughs> Absolutely, Wendell. Coming through in the clutch. All right. So we're gonna uh keep moving through our QA. Gregory, you're up next, man. Greetings. Thank you so much, Daraj. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um yeah, hope everybody right. can hear me well. Um Thank you again. This platform is amazing. I saw the title, and uh, obviously the, the the black was a buzzword for obvious reasons. So here I am, and it's amazing. I'm honored to be in the presence of amongst some amazing, amazing creatives. Um, but this uh, question is from Matthew. Uh, Matthew, I really appreciate everything you've been saying, you and Wendell, and everybody here so far. Um, as as a fellow film compo a score composer, um, who I've had some experience doing sync licensing, but um, sort of when I, I sort of taken a like a, a hiatus and I was working on the, the, the re-recording and mixing and sound design side, um, but getting back to music, I heard you mentioned, um, hey, call my agent in one of your stories. And that was basically the, just the gist of my question. Um, for someone like myself who really works remotely, because as thankfully because of technology, we can work from anywhere. Um, how would I go about someone of my, of my, I guess my caliber and where I've been, how would I go about finding representation um, should I look for a single agent or an agency? What are your thoughts on that? And how would I, um, how can I move forward in that regard? Cool. Yeah. My rule of thumb is let the agents find you. Um, because I want, you want somebody that wants to work with you and work for you and believe in your music. Um, so I got my agents literally um, because of me building my projects. And so I did Greenleaf and after I did Greenleaf, an agency called me and said, who's your representation? They will find you. Agents are looking for for new composers, up and coming composers. Um, so it's just one of those things where you have to build it. Um, I never reached out or cold called agents um, because, you know, one thing about an agency is that, you know, either you join a huge agency and all of a sudden you're on a, you're on a roster with 80 other composers and they're going to push the one that's the, the hottest composer. It's like being assigned to a label. You know, they're going to put the first ones that are, you know, you know, signed and got major hits. And, and also they're going to go off the ones that are most relationship with the director um, and producers. So a lot of production companies want to hire Hans Zimmer. They don't want to hire Matt Head. They want to hire Hans Zimmer because Hans Zimmer has the catalog. He has the namesake, that kind of thing. So I always, you know, my rule of thumb was let the music speak for itself. And once the music leads gets to the right ear that agent will call and that agent calls and then that's the one that believes in you that's the one that wants to shop your music or put you in in situations that better your your career and opportunity um so that's one thing number two the the i i like to work with smaller agencies because they give you more boutique projects you know working on boutique projects like a step up or even like a mahalia is kind of cool because it's like you know unexpected kind of stuff um you know giving you opportunities that you know for new shows Pete valley was a very boutique kind of show and you know my agent it was one of those you know this is different you know this may happen this may not it could be a hit or a flop but it's different um so yeah i'll always tell composers never you know wait till that agent calls you um you can definitely reach out to them but you know it's hard to get their attention because they really they want to see if they can work with you, you know, and nine times out of 10, they want to make money off of you. So if you're not building anything relationship wise, there's no need for them to, you know, work with you. But unless you start building that relationship with people, then it'll happen for you. And if you can, if you can, if you can make your own connections, you don't need an agent, you know, because you can show, you can show that you can get, all they're doing is getting you work. If you can get your own work, right. Does LeBron James really need, somebody to say hey put me on your basketball team no he might need somebody to negotiate the contract if that's the case but lebron james really could say listen i want 49 million and that's it 
and they're going to pick him up. He doesn't really need an agent. He doesn't really need an agent. He can just walk in the room. At the end of the day, you cannot get an agent if you don't have a track record of work. All right. So even considering an agent, if you don't have a track record, it's impossible. But if you have a track record and let's just say you want a little bit of a leg up and you do a certain amount of work, but not so much work that you don't need somebody, then OK, then an agent is might see something great that you do. And remember, you talked about that cold email. You can say, hey, I scored four four cues on Greenleaf and I've scored four cues on Ballers and I scored four cues or four commercials for this and that. And that might be enough to get an agent's attention. And because you're not somebody that likes to cold call or likes to take that crumpled up card that they got at a party and say, hey, all right, I'm going to call this person because how many times do we get a card and we don't call them, right? So if you're not that person innately, then you might want an agent, but you don't want an agent until you have the body of work that the that, that agent will be attracted to. Because if you're not, if they don't, if they're not attracted to you at the initial break, just like my man just said, they have 80 other clients and you're going to be number 81. And so that's what you want to consider when getting an agent, because you really don't need one at the onset. Yeah, and sorry, uh, Eric, were you going to say something? No, no, so look, you go ahead. Yeah, uh, really great discussion. I, 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 it, it's, it's really cool to kind of hear two sides of it where, as um, you know, because as far as with working with agents as well, um, you know, their role is, is really unique in representing and helping exploit, solicit, and create opportunities. So, uh, we, like, we applaud all the, like, agents in the room as well. Uh, but it is a kind of a, a unique side to it, I think, Window touched on as far as there are some of those artists who are just really, really hungry um, and enjoy the process of going out and kind of hunting and seeking their own opportunities. So it is kind of like a find your path, you know, because there are some people who, uh, you know, really just don't like doing all the legwork and negotiation and dealing with contracts. And, and I say dealing with contracts loosely because I think every artist should read their contracts. But um, but as far as just that negotiation and people management and, you know, follow up and all that kind of stuff, if you're not that artist, um, you know, a, a agent is really, really um, a, a great choice for you. But, you know, like for me as well, like I, I'm very forward. I, I, I enjoy the process of trying to reach out to, you know, new supervisors, partly how, you know, control camp even kind of got birthed. But, um, but I love all of the range of perspective that's going on. Uh, it's just been a really, really rich conversation. And we are, believe it or not, at the last question of the night. And Angela, you do us the honor of closing us out. <laughs> it's on you. <laughs> all right. OK, so look, I don't really even have any questions anymore. But I would like to say, first of all, thank you, Control Camp. Um, Eric has been a friend of mine for a while. Um, Matt, um, you know, we got a chance to work on Merry Wishmas together back in 2018. Um, I'm actually going to be moving up to Atlanta soon this year. So I hope to link up with you. Um, our families connect, break bread with your wife and your kids. Um, Jizzle, thank you so much for just getting out with me. Um, and just thank you for that. Just raising the bar on anthemic sports. Uh, Shalea, thank you so much for your work in the Clark Sisters because I'm a huge Clark Sisters fan, fan and that movie touched my soul. You guys did a phenomenal job. Um, Bo, I just want to say um, thank you as well for just uh, the content I've seen on your on YouTube and your interview with Ari and just I uh, hope to hopefully take your class one day. Uh, Clint, I just want to say thank you for your your IG, all your work you do on IG and heard and for moderating as well. And then Window, I don't think there's any contact information for you on your on your bio. So that's the only question I think I really have. Other than Matt, hey, we need to link up. Um, that's it. That's all I want to say. Thank you guys so much for such a great panel. And I'm sorry, I'm very new to Clubhouse. I have no idea what I'm doing at all. I mean, I I hardly even got on this call. I don't. I was for a while. I was like, well, how am I even going to get on this call? And I don't know how I did, but I must have hit some button. But let me just tell you, I have no idea what I'm doing on Clubhouse. But let me just. I'm going to give my information because. Everyone who asked a question and everybody who's on this panel, I am blown away because I've been using 
my team and my similar people for years. And I always want new people. I'm like, ah, we need some new people. And you know what? I love what y'all are doing. I love that there's, I love that there's African Americans who are consciously, consciously thinking about something besides winning the Grammy, right? We all want to win a Grammy, but I love that there, everybody's thinking about other ways. There's revenue streams in different areas. That's, that's amazing. So let me just give you my information because I would love if everybody, and I'm sure everybody who's on this panel would love connections. I would love if everybody on this panel emailed me because I'm one of those people that listen to everything and look at every email and I'm always looking. So my email is this. It's Wendell, W-E-N-D-E-L-L dot H-A-N-E-S at gmail.com. It's very simple. My website is volitionsound.com, V-O-L-I-T-O-I-T-I-O-N. I'm sorry, V-O-L-I-T-I-O-N, sound.com. I would love to work with all of y'all because you know what? I have a project that works with everybody that's on this panel right now. I've, I only know the stories of the people on the panel. I don't know the people in the audience, but everybody that's on this panel, there was a green light that hit. I was like, oh, I, I got something for them. I got something for them. I got, I got it right now. So please hit me up. And Eric, I don't know how you found me on LinkedIn. I know I do a couple posts every now and then, but I want to thank you. And I want to thank every other moderator on this panel. And I want to thank the whole clubhouse situation because this is a pretty amazing and this is a great clubhouse forum. So whatever you guys and what you have set up and you're planning to do this every Wednesday, that's amazing. You're doing a great service. All right. And I want to be, I'm honored to be on it. And I want to thank everybody on here. Okay. And please connect with me. And if you're sending out a link, so people, if they didn't get the email when I said it, if there's a link that says, hey, here's the email, everybody on this panel, Jizzle, Ale uh, um, I don't Shalea. know everybody's name, Vo, Shalea, listen, y'all are dope. And, I, and I'm just finding y'all. And I've, 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 I've run 25 years by myself, in my opinion, right? I mean, I got a, I got a dope team, obviously, but I want a dope, I want, I want what everybody wants. I want novelty. I want to see, I want to bring new people into it. And I, everything I've heard, every story I've heard from y'all, y'all are dope. And that's the thing. And I want to say this panel is called Black Creators. It's amazing to see and hear black creators that you didn't know of. I knew Quincy Jones, but I didn't know Shalea. I didn't know Vo. I did not know Jizzle. I did not know a lot. Of, I didn't know. And that's the whole thing is we're in a world. We are all born into this world where our conquest, our mission is to know. And everybody that set this panel up, you guys have put us in a position of knowing and that is amazing. And I salute you all. It's a very powerful statement, man. And, and um, um, you, I want to say a couple of things. Is, is one, um, we I do have um, Wendell's Gmail that he sent out. So if you didn't get that, if you're on the panel, you can feel free to send it. And we're gonna, I'm gonna go around. I want to give everyone a chance to say a quick um, closing thing. If you want to um, let make people aware of something. Um, those who've been in control camp before know we are very protective of our panelists. Wendell um, gave out his email and we um, we have been, a, sh a lot of us who are new to sync or just new learning about business development will tell you like everybody who's on the panel, follow them diligently, follow aggressively, but be really cautious in people's DMs and people's emails. And you, every single person up here talked about how they built their relationship. Even when when they talked about their cold emailing strat strategy, there was a there was a level of humanity to it. They dealt with real people like they were real people, and so we talk about that every week. And so um, I, we continually put that out there because we don't want you know we don't want a hundred people um, sending hey did you get my email or hey did you listen to my music messages to all the guests that we bring on each week. 
Um, we are so thankful to each and every one of you. I cannot tell you. We've been talking. Alyssa, Steph, Diraj, and I have been talking and chatting all week just try about how to pull this together and how epic we knew that this would be. And you guys did not disappoint. And so um, we thank each and every one of you. We're going to, um, before we're saying our goodbyes, we're going to transition. If you know about Control Camp, you know we, we go to our after party. Anyone who wants to just hang out, and it's an, it's an unmoderated room, so anybody can come on the stage and just chat and get to know each other. You have to be a control. Um, you have to be in control club. So if you're not a member of control, um, control camp, click on Daraj's profile, click on my profile and the, the camp is the very first, um, club at the bottom of our profiles and just click follow. And then when we start the room right after this, uh, it'll show up in your, um, in your hallway and you can come in and make yourself known and you can come on stage chat. And we just, we, we stay around for an extra hour, um, just to get to know, because we've been getting so many people joining and we only get to hear like from 10 people during the Q&A each week and so the after party is our chance to really get to know all of our different um all of our different members so stick around for that um real quick let's just roll around um um f uh starting with Vo um uh, w w w I mean Windows when do you s you know we got to get Windows email and contact and left us beautifully, but I want to hear from Vo, Clint, Shalaya, Jizzle, Matthew. Just give them a quick, if there's something you want people to know about, then we want to make them aware of, or just uh, anything you want to leave, uh, let's give everybody a quick 15 second um, farewell, starting with Vo. Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to say thanks for having me. And um, I really appreciate all the panelists and, and learning more about your stories. Um, yeah. All I would just say is, uh, you know, I wish everyone well and and i wish you all luck and um gain as much research as you can uh, get educated on the space and and i'll see you uh i'll see you when you get here yes sir at right, clint hey guys thank you again eric and Daraj, for having me this has been an amazing um room an amazing panel you guys are definitely one of my favorite rooms on on clubhouse one of the most organized uh, one of the most informative um it's just really it's really great how you guys have this set up so thank you for having me it's always a pleasure um shout out to all the amazing panelists and and everything that you guys are doing um, congrats to all the success and just wishing much more for you guys um and and a shout out to the room everybody who's listening in um i just want to encourage you guys to to not give up on your dreams and your goals um just stay diligent stay consistent um and you know put the work in don't be scared to uh don't try and skip steps and, and skip the work there's no shortcuts um uh, sometimes things look easy on we you know when we post things our successes but is is a lot of work in the background that's that's happening there's a lot of relationship building that matthew was talking about um so put in that work and um just keep your head down keep working and before you know it you know you look up and and um you'll be a lot further than than where you started Awesome. Shalea. I just really want to just express how honored I am to just be amongst these incredible uh, creatives. Um, just like, you know, the people listening in, I was also inspired by everything that was uh, said tonight. So thank you so much for having me. Um, just to those who are listening, you know, something that I always uh, tell people and tell myself is, do whatever you do, whatever you create, do it with love. And if you do it with love, you will never get burnt out. You may get tired, you may get fatigued, but you won't get burnt out. You won't be disappointed when you don't get certain opportunities you think you should or, or you know, Grammys. And, you know, we, we see so many artists sometimes at times get so frustrated and say they don't want to even be in the industry anymore because they didn't get a, a nomination or the accolades or everything else that comes with it. I would just say when you do it from love, you'll, you will never um, you will never lose your zeal for what you do. And so just, just check your heart, make sure that, you know, if this is an industry that you want to be in, that knowing that it's going to be a lot of rejection, uh, along the way. Um, but, but if you know in your heart that, that what you're creating is touching someone else's heart, that's your reward. Um, and that's, that's, 
something that I have uh, held on to, and I, I feel like it has definitely served me well. So thanks again for having me. It, it was such a highlight to my night. That's beautiful. Thank you, Shalaya, so much. Uh, Jizzle. Oh, hey, uh, I just want to say thank you to um, Control Camp for having me, of course. Um, my, my dog, my bestie, Steph, and uh, Deraz, Alyssa, Eric, thank you guys. You've been um, amazing moderators. And everybody on the panel, um, it's been a blessing to just share space and, and energy and wisdom. And I'm, I'm so thankful for uh, everyone's input. You know, none of the words were empty or uh, contrived. So I, I really appreciate that. And uh, just a chance to learn. Um, from my peers and, 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 you know, possible mentors. So I'm hoping we all can stay connected and collaborate and, uh, you know, do and create together. So, you know, like maybe the top of the, the name is like the top black creators who create together in music and film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful to uh, share space. Um, like I said, my name is Jizzle. Uh, if you go to my bio on here, my Instagram here, I'm always down to uh, talk and, um, you know, Trey vibes in the DM. If you got music, uh, I can't get to everything, but I'll get to as much as possible. So anybody listening, feel free to tap in. I got to send a quick shout out to my bro, Che Pope up in here. Super incredibly dope creative. So if y'all find him down there, y'all should follow him too, because he does amazing things um, in the music space as well. But uh, yeah, man, thank you guys. Tonight was cool. This was my first time uh, being on a panel and I had fun. So glad to have you. And uh, lastly, Matt. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Um, this was fun. Uh, first of all, I truly appreciate the opportunity to speak and share my testimony. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like everyone else, man. I, I just kind of want everyone to, you know, follow, follow, um, you know, understand the difference between your gifts and your passions um, and just really focus on that uh, in this industry. Because this industry is very fickle and funny. So understand the difference between what is your gift and what is your passion. I never knew I'll be scoring films. My goal was to be Timberland and Dr. Dre, and then all of a sudden I'm scoring films. But one thing about you know me understanding that is understanding that my gift of music will open doors for me. And so just understand all. Once you kind of get a grip with that, grasp with that, you know, slowly and surely things will open up for you. I tell Eric all the time. I speak life into a lot of things, and I say, Eric, you should write a book. And he wrote a book. You know what I'm saying? Because he's an excellent writer. It's not about writing songs. He's an excellent writer, you know? Um, so if you're making beats and it's not working out for you, you know, try something else, you know, you know, listen to God or listen to the universe and pray about, you know, what is I'm supposed to be doing? And they will lead you to that. It will, it will lead you to where you feel like, and then that's when the industry will open up for you um, because there's so many opportunities in this industry that, you just don't know, you know, is needed. Music editors, music supervisor, you know, um, sound designers, all that stuff is all in, you know, wrapped into this industry. And believe me, it's a need for all of them. So just understand your gifts and passions and, and keep your eye open for other opportunities. Y'all are going to learn about Madhead. I've been telling him he needs to get on Clubhouse for the longest time. I'm like, bro, you always speak life into so many people. Clubhouse is where you need to be. And now we got you here, bro. You need to be here every Wednesday. I hope you know. That goes for everybody on the panel. We're here every week. And, um, you know, we usually will be interviewing somebody. And then after we do the interview, we bring, you know, people up to the stage and people just to share wisdom and continue to answer, answer questions. So I hope this is just the start of you guys coming to build with the camp and just share your wisdom. Come through. And we, we're all working. But if you get a chance on a Wednesday afternoon, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can set your clock and say, oh, I got a minute. Let me jump on and share some wisdom with Control Camp. So y'all family now. So come on through. Um, Alyssa, uh, want to give you a chance. Any, any, so thanks so much for being here. Any uh, final words? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, for everyone out there, you know, I would just tell you to just try. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with trying and you're never going to know if you don't try. So really just put yourself out there. But also as we've gone over, you know, in the previous conversations today, be respectful. The people that you're reaching out to are human beings. They are not people who are there to serve your every need. <laughs> so we all should just 
you know, keep that in mind when we're communicating with people in the industry. And, and most importantly, you know, the most, I would say, uh, beneficial uh, partnerships that I have created in the industry are just genuine relationships. So just don't forget that. So awesome. And well said. Thank you. I'm so glad you were um, co-moderating today. It was a pleasure to have you. Um, before, Likewise. Before Daraj closes us out, we also want to always shout out Steph. Steph has been, Music Box has been like family with us since the very beginning. Like um, just connecting us with Alyssa, bringing these awesome awesome artists through we're on the phone multiple times every week just throwing ideas like she's a uh, a sincere stakeholder and wants this to succeed as much as we do and we just love you for that Steph any little last words any last thoughts I do not want the last room uh, last words in the room of top black creators (laughs) but I will give you the last words before before I go I will say you know I want to say that I'm proud to see a lot of the people I pinged into this room, including a lot of people who are not black, because I think it's super important. And Eric and Daraj and Alyssa and I talked about this week when, you know, cause I'm always on the moderating panel and I said, maybe I'll step down. And I think one of the most important critical things is that we need allies in the world. So don't be intimidated to go into rooms that say, you know, for black creators, you know, it's just super important. There's so many problems that we didn't get to talk about or touch on tonight because we were giving everybody their flowers. It was hard for every single one of these creators to get where they were. Uh, and there's a lot of work that has to be done to get the next generation of these incredible black creators to the next space, along with also, you know, other creators, including female in the BIPOC, you know, community. So please, you know, don't be afraid to jump into rooms like this. Don't be afraid to reach out. And the immediate thing that you can do to try to change that is start to work with some of these amazing people on this stage if you get lucky enough to do it. And I'm certainly grateful to have worked with like five or six out of them. So (laughs) I'm really fortunate. But thank you guys for holding this space. And thank you to Eric and Daraj who always hold this amazing room. And I want to encourage everyone in the room to go back to ctrlcamp.com you know, in terms of reaching out to people and stuff like that, you know, Wendell had a great idea to reach out to people, but Eric and Daraj have literally written the manual for you on how to approach people and our favorite slogan of how to be a human. So I encourage everyone to tap into that. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Daraj, I'm going to let you close this out as we transition to the after party. Absolutely. I don't. I don't know what I could say that hasn't already been said. I mean, it's just, I think the the sentiment has just been echo how appreciative we are of everybody who, you know, just gave of their time to be here and share of their years and years of experience is just immensely grateful. And it's just incredibly valuable to the camp that we have here. And so I always say, is, you, know, you never know just that one piece of information that might change somebody's course. Um, and so I just, I just thank you all for being, available um, for moments like these. Uh, yeah, to, to close this out, two things I want to say. I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Wendell real quick because he found out, he found a way to work the word bugaboo in a sentence around 9.30 and <laughs> it's 2021. So I just got to give you props for that, man. I don't know how you did it, but yeah. Uh, so that's- uh, <laughs> You were stupid. I, I was first one, but, but second, <laughs> you know I had, a, I had a cut up, man. But second thing on, on a more serious note, uh, I, I got a, I think he's still in the room. Is he here? There he is. Psychosis. I'm talking to you, man. Uh, I got a shout out Psychosis real quick. He's one of the, um, you know, just familiar family. He's a part of the camp, but he just had a, I mean, a light of black history month, just had a sync today and uh, became the first hip hop artist to have their song placed in a Sunny Delight artist. I mean, a Sunny Delight commercial. So we just got to give you your yes, your sir. flowers, as you say, Psychosis, man. We super proud of you, bro. That's big. Man, I really appreciate it, man. Um, honestly, the, 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 the sync didn't happen today. It actually happened three years ago, but it happened around this time three years ago. And it was kind of a joke with sharing it, but I honestly thought about it when I was looking at it. I was like, I, I'm pretty sure this is probably the first time this company or a company like this has used a hip hop song. So I shared it. Um, I just wanted to say that 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 commercial that uh, that sync got placed in is kind of how I 
got introduced in the clubhouse because I was explaining a story of how that happened to me and all the lessons I learned after it. Um, and the many, many people on this panel uh, that I follow and and admire you guys' work. And I want to say that I sure I speak on everybody who's been in the audience for the last hour, hour and a half listening that, uh, Wendell, you got to say the doors of the church is open every time you finish talking. Um, <laughs> because it's that, it's that powerful. Um, Shalea got, you know, congrats to you. Uh, saw you on Zoom as well the other night. And I told Steph that girl can sing, like my auntie would say. Um, Bo, uh, Jizu, I'm kind of disappointed I hear neither one of y'all say Hitman Holla and A Verb and y'all battle rap, but we'll <laughs> we'll talk about that later. And um and Alyssa and everybody else, Eric Dorage, of course, salute to you guys. Uh this is one of the most powerful um rooms and, and communities, I would say. It's not even a room, it's a community that happens twice a week and we get to learn each other's story and each other's music. And uh, you guys providing this space, as as Wendell already said, is so powerful for all of us to learn from people. You know, I could go on for a long time, but it's so many things about the people on this panel that I that I watch. Like for example, Clint, he's not only good at produ uh, production, he's also hilarious in a lot of his posts. So that helps him, you know, be a human, and that <laughs> it makes you want to keep looking at his content because. He's going to tell you not just from a producer standpoint, but it's also just hilarious. So, so many little things that everybody does that makes them very interested. And, and uh, beyond just being a musician, you guys are really just dope people and inspiring. So I appreciate everybody on the panel and, and thank you. Absolutely, man. We celebrate you, Psychosis. We love you, bro. Appreciate you. And you're absolutely right. I had no idea Clint was that hilarious the first time I met him. Like, this dude is a completely different personal IG, <laughs> but bro is hilarious man <laughs> all right so that that closes out our night we appreciate everybody who stayed for the whole time and you know as mentioned if you missed it uh we have a re we're gonna have a replay on um, our website controlcamp.com but without further ado we're gonna transition out of this room and go into the after party where we're just gonna kick it and just you know chop it up and vibe with everybody so if you're part of the camp come through you know how we do and uh i hope everyone enjoys the rest of the evening Thank you all so much again. We just loved having you all. This was amazing. Thank you, guys. Peace out, guys. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Peace. Thanks. Good night, guys. Good night, good night, y'all. Yeah.